In 1964, Soviet astronomer Nikolai Kardashev carved his name into cosmological history with the Kardashev scale, a means to measure hypothetically advanced civilizations based on the amount of energy they can wield. At Kardashev Type 3, it's everything in a galaxy. For humans, that means every star, planet, black hole, pulsar, everything in the Milky Way. What would you do with all of that power? So what exactly is a Type 3 civilization? The term was first coined by the Soviet astronomer Nikolai Kardashev, who devised a way to categorize the degree of technological advancement and intergalactic influence of all hypothetical societies. He originally offered three separate groups, types 1, 2, and 3, with more categories added afterwards to encompass even more possibilities for our imagined civilizations. But still, type 3 is held as an ultimate end goal. According to the Kardashev scale, a Type 1 group is able to harness all of the energy produced by and on its home planet. Type 2 groups can capture and efficiently use the energy produced by their most local star, perhaps at their highest level through something called a Dyson Sphere, a theoretical device that would surround the Sun to transfer energy back to us like super-efficient solar panels. But a Type 3 civilization runs off of the energy output of its entire galaxy. In our case, it'd mean a system of energy capture that would leave no star or object in the Milky Way untouched or untapped. We'd be a super advanced race of beings with seemingly limitless power. As mentioned, the Kardashev scale has been expanded in both directions more recently to include Type 0, medieval-style tech that we've since improved upon, but also Type 4, the harnessing of energy from an entire universe, and Type 5, which unlocks the power of the multiverse. But let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. Type 3 galactic power has often been billed as the major breakthrough. So what would entering Kardashev's third tier mean for us? And where exactly are we starting from? Well, according to Carl Sagan's interpretation back in the 1970s, Earth deserved to be classified as a Type 0.7 planet, which, in Kardashev's grand scheme of things, feels fairly disappointing, especially since we're also the most advanced civilization we've ever seen in all of the universe. For Sagan, combining both our technological advancement and our general access to information, that is the things we have, but also the things we know. We can't yet consider ourselves fully Type 1. Regardless, theoretical physicist Michio Kaku has said he thinks humanity will assume our place as a Type 1 group in a century or two. While the milestones for progress between 0 and 1 aren't universally agreed upon, we have at least achieved some degree of technological and societal improvement to show that we are heading in the right direction. Remember, it's mostly about using our own planet's potential in as efficient and logical a way as possible. For example, we've made steps toward a global language. Our worldwide communication system, the internet, is potentially only decades away from being accessible for every member of our species, and we've seen the birth of mostly cohesive trading blocks like the European Union. To truly become a Type 1 civilization, though, we have to balance our technological progress with the environment, ecosystems, and general planet that we live on, or else we risk an early self-destruction. With the fabled Type 3 ban set firmly in our sights, however, we need cultural and scientific revolution 100 times over. And the issue of energy, locating it, storing it, and transmitting it, would be at the heart of our efforts. We'd have to build systems that harvest the output of entire stars, which, at the very least, would require some form of reliable interstellar travel, or arguably more simply, some kind of web of interstellar connections. As our ability to reach further into the stars increases, though, so do our chances of being challenged, meaning we'd need to also be prepared to hide or protect ourselves from the possibility of other advanced groups who can do the same thing. Of course, all of these things are much easier said than done, and actually achieving them would require us to overcome all sorts of barriers and possibly rethink the seemingly immovable facts about the fabric of the universe. The laws of thermodynamics, the laws of stable matter, and the implicit laws of planetary evolution could all slow our progress in ways we can hardly begin to anticipate. But as our expanding pool of technological knowledge has helped us in the past, we'd still need to find answers to these problems. Perhaps our own biological shortcomings would be the first things we'd overcome, in the hope that a race that lives forever will improve forever. We'd employ new technologies to survive most natural, currently inevitable causes of death. Sickness and the ill effects of old age would surely be things of the past in an existence where we have the ability to capture and use the energy of entire stars at our leisure. With our own biology essentially updated, our population would rapidly increase day by day as we also master self-replication techniques. 
but the problems of overpopulation would have long gone, seeing as we'd no longer be confined to just Earth. In fact, we may have moved off of Earth completely. And so, as we expand into the universe fueled by the energy potential of an entire galaxy, we'd reach the limit of what Kardashev originally thought was possible. But such inconceivable developments could never unfold without dramatic societal change as well. To overcome political barriers and create a truly united community, we'd need to establish seamless, unshakable social cohesion throughout our species, allowing us to progress toward our increasing goals. Even achieving intergalactic energy capture would require all of us working together, rather than trying to battle and beat each other to key discoveries, inventions, or pieces of legislation. For some, those same qualities are needed to graduate beyond even Type 1, with our planet currently feeling the effects of war, division, and overconsumption. If we can't band together for our own world, then could we ever truly expect to tame galaxies? Ultimately, our ascendance to Kardashev's level 3 could require us to rewrite what it means to be human, to readjust our natural instincts, to work as one thriving, fluid, intelligent mass. Perhaps we'd slowly, organically evolve over hundreds of thousands of years, or perhaps we'd gradually mechanize ourselves to keep up. Yeah, we're talking cyborgs. At least part robotic recreations of real-world people could give us a limitless means for storing information in the form of memories. The internet would be integrated into our very thoughts, constantly added to by every other Type 3 being, equipping us with instant knowledge on any subject. There are obvious downsides, including the prospects that our shared supercomputer could get hacked by a higher power, and the probability that our individual personalities would disappear as soon as our minds are networked together to turn us into blockchain humans. But such a shift would see us soar up Kardashev's scale, granting everyone access to everyone else's thoughts, memories, and ideas to further improve our status as a civilization. With such radical changes shaping us into almost unrecognizable beings from what we are today, there'd be little incentive or need to conventionally work as a Type 3 human. Most tasks would be automated with little to no human intervention required. Instead, we'd be at liberty to continue exploring other galaxies, now that we've mastered our own, exposing our collective consciousness to what the wider universe has to offer. We'd no longer be limited by the planet we were born on, because we could travel anywhere, the wealth we were or weren't born into, because we'd all be equal, or the confines of even life expectancy, having sidestepped aging and sickness too. And so, with so much time on our hands, we'd almost inevitably busy ourselves trying to reach Kardashev levels 4 and 5, to wield universal power over everything in existence. This seemingly insatiable quest to complete Kardashev's scale does throw up a few existential questions. In this new world, what makes our lives worth living? How would we spend our extra time, effort, and intellect? Would our primal needs for things like food, water, shelter, and family still drive us in the same way? The average human's role in a civilization that has claimed dominion over an entire galaxy would clearly be completely different to what we experience today. And that's what would happen if humanity was a Type 3 civilization. What do you think? Is there anything we missed? Let us know in the comments, check out these other clips from Unveiled, and make sure you subscribe and ring the bell for our latest content.